Good evening. My name is John X, and I am the host of this show called Excellence. Share it. Tonight we have four distinguished business people who work at Gulfstream Paper Airplane Company. First, we have Nancy, a designer, and we have Ed from IT, and we have Aki from Quality Control, and we have Denise, Logistics Manager. For tonight's uh, topic, I have been reading Stephen Covey's book entitled Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in this book, Mr. Covey speaks about principles of personable management. He focuses on how to prioritize important things before urgent emergencies. This habit suggests that what is important may in fact be very different from what we call urgent. But now let's just hear from our panel. My first question is, who can give me the difference between management and leadership? Oh, John, I think I can, uh, I think I can speak to that. Um, management and leadership, the, the difference between management and leadership is that the managers are dealing with the day-to-day -day minute operations of the company, um, and, and where leadership is dealing with the big picture. So, so our manager here from, from logistics would, would, would be dealing with what, with what her employees need to work on. Um, one, one of the examples that Mr. Covey gave in the book that, that I, I particularly liked was, was with people cutting down trees in a forest. You've got, um, you got the men out there cutting down the trees with axes and the managers are making sure that the axes are sharp and the people are doing it in the most efficient way possible. And the leaders are making sure you're in the right forest. So, so you've got your, your president of your company that's making the big decisions and he's not being bothered with the, with the small day-to-day -day decisions that, that need to be made, like what kind of, uh, do I get clicky top pens or, or, or twisty top pens? But he's making the big business decisions and, and leaves the other stuff up to the management. Thank you, Ed. And, and you know, as I was reading Stephen Covey's book, I came across a word, and I was just very curious, and I wasn't quite sure on how or what the definition was. And the word was proactive. So who in this group can give me a, a good definition or an example of what proactive means. I can answer that question, um, proactive. Proactive means that taking initiative and also being responsible of your own actions, your own destinations, and basically being responsible of your life. So in my department, when I have a program, with quality of this airplane, it's up to us to make it better. It's not other people's fault. It's not other department's fault. We have to make it better. That's what proactive means. Well, thank you, Aki. Now I have a better understanding. Also, I've noticed something else in the book, uh, and I would just like someone to please explain to the audience, what does begin with the end mean? Uh, I can answer that, John. Um, I can answer that, John. Uh, to begin with the end in mind, basically is uh, habit two of uh, Covey's book. And in it, he asks you to visualize your own funeral. By that, he wants you to think about what you want people to say about you when you pass away. Uh, what would be said in your obituary? And um, I can give an example for myself. Um, I basically knew that I hadn't been giving my all for my group. We have a deadline on a project that we're working on, and um, I haven't really been productive in helping them get this uh, accomplished. And uh, when Ed actually uh, suggested that I read Covey's book, uh, it really helped me to realize and look at myself and uh, kind of flip the script and say, what would this company or what would my group say about me? Uh, if I were to leave the company today. And I, I felt that it wouldn't be anything good because I'm not doing what I should be doing. So I made a commitment after reading the book to really be a team leader, a team player, and to really help us uh, accomplish our goal. Thank you, Nancy. That was well put. Thank you. Also, I just would like to know, how do you integrate first things first 
on your present job? I think I can answer that for you, John. We were really having a, a difficult time being the logistics manager. We had some issues. We had some deadlines that were not being met. And just backtracking a little bit to kind of help you understand what, what this means here. We had a very large supplier that was awaiting uh, our paper airplanes. We needed them to be put on the shelf by mid-October. And we had some issues with our supplier. We had some issues uh, with our production and our scheduling. And so we kind of all teamed up. We read this book. We kind of got our priorities straight here. And we did some very interesting things to move our company in the right direction. So what we did was, putting first things first, we implemented a preventative maintenance program for our machines. We then, which eliminated costly production downtime, we got a secondary supplier, which helped us, and we also began to have an, a small inventory for speak, uh, spike um, areas of our um, seasonal periods. So what that enabled us to do was we were communicating better, we were building relationships with our customers and our suppliers, and focusing on planning and prevention and relationship building were the three key elements that uh, in Stephen Covey's book uh, we really brought to light. So hopefully that answers the question for you. Very much so. Okay. Thank you, Denise. You're welcome. Also, I would like uh, to answer, ask, uh, is it vital to be centered? Is it vital to be centered? Oh, ab absolutely. Uh, it, that's one of the one of the high points of this book, um, especially section two, is that is that there. If you have a principled centered, and that's that's, that's a balanced center, you you. You, you're not you're not just you're not just sucked into one one certain one certain aspect of life. Uh, Mr. Covey highlighted many many different types of alternate centers that he was recommending that you that you kind of stay away from. Like people can get can become centered around their spouse or their family or or, or you know their money or their work. I mean I know I have that problem with just really being involved in what I do. Um, people get centered on on possessions and money and pleasure. And their friends, or even their church, which which may seem noble, but ultimately, if you if you're centered on principles, you can enjoy all those other things. You can be a strong family man and a loving husband or wife, but you, you have principles to fall back on. And, and one of the points Mr. Covey made is that, that principles are time tested, and and if you rely on your principles, good, solid, honest, hardworking principles, those those will stand through thousands of years instead of being the you know little quick fixes that uh, that so many other self help books focus on nowadays. Thank you, Ed. Now, as we conclude uh, this interview, I would like to know, do we have any products from Gulfstream Paper Airplane Company that perhaps our viewers can see? Yes, I have one here that we've been working on. And like I said, we were having problems. Both Denise and I uh, noticed that we were having actual problems. So um, I thought about it, and I suggested possibly that we would remove the clips off of the wings and basically maybe have super glue here instead and in that way we feel that it would be a more balanced project. Thank you. So as we conclude, does anybody, uh, anyone part of this panel have any final words to say to our audience? Well, I would like to just mention that I think as a company what we took out of this book and our experience is really empowering our employees to see through the lens of importance rather than urgency. That is a key and also balance and harmony, which helps us personally and professionally. Well, thank you. Absolutely. So as we conclude, I want to thank Denise, Nancy, Aki, and Ed from Gulfstream Paper Airplane Company for this interview and enlightening us on the Seven Habits of Effective People by Stephen Covey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think, Nancy?